Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in your day. Welcome to the lesson for April 28th for Informal Geometry in Algebra 1 for Mr. Harris at Pulaski High School Remote Learning. Um, yeah, welcome. Good to interact with you, however virtual it may be. Appreciate always you guys uh, posting stuff on the forms, emailing, texting, calling, FaceTiming, uh, whatever it may be. So always good to interact with you folks and uh, hoping you and your family are healthy and well. That being said, let us uh, dive into the overview first. View. All right, so first things first, no worries. The big thing is for, um, for this to be a, a flexible thing. So you're passing for the course, you have credit, so do whatever part or all this uh, works for you. And don't be, you know, uh, too concerned if you're not getting everything and keeping up in uh, real time and uh, all that. I left everything open till the seventh uh, of June, and then in Concon you can access past due assignments all through the summer. So the big part uh, for this is to um uh, keep shipping away so you know if you don't get all of it one day or you miss a day all right no worries uh you know just keep keep chipping away keep trying to get your half hour in get stuck call email text skype facetime zoom whatever okay just keep moving uh, in a forward direction as best you can. Um, yeah, and the assignments were shooting for 75%, but if you can't get that, no worries. You know, take it the next day, try a different one, try a concept you might see next year, try a concept from the past that maybe needs some reinforcement, whatever best supports you. The key is to just keep chipping away. A thousand mile journey begins with the one step. So just keep doing your, your part every day. Uh, form. So a new form on math, benefits and challenges of remote learning. Benefit for me, is more time with my family. Challenge for me is not being able to see and do math face to face with students. So maybe you have something similar, maybe you don't. No worries either way. Post what you have. And yeah, always good to hear from students. So that being said, move on to our examples and formal geometry first then algebra one and um, assignments are on con reach out if you have questions and always good to interact with you guys however we restricted we are face to face during this unprecedented time okay so formal geometry example we need to find surface area of the tent, including the floor. So uh, we got some rectangles, three of them, because we're including the floor. Uh, so three rectangles, each side and the bottom. And then uh, we have a couple of triangles. And it looks to me like this triangle is equilateral because one plus one on the bottom here will get us two. So the 
So I'm doing the uh, area of uh, this side here, purple side. Yep, purple side. That is uh, three by two length times width. And then using that property of equilateral, if this is two and this is two and this is two, the area of all the sides would be the same because it's three feet deep. So there are three of those purple rectangles, the side, side, and the whole. So two times three times three is. Nine times two, which is 18, or six times three. So that is the uh, area of the uh, sides. Okay. So uh, 18 meters squared. So, and then let's get the area of the uh, face of this guy. So the area of this triangle right here, bearing in mind that there will be an exact replica or congruent of the same triangle on the back of the tent. So area of the uh, triangle, whoa, want that, undo, want this, one half the base, which is one plus one or two. Times the height. And there are two of those triangles, there's one in the front, one in the back. So one of the two in there. Uh, so one half times two, that's just one. You get 1.7 times two, which is 3.4. And that is the area of the triangles. Okay, so that's the area of the triangles. So we're good with that. To uh, finish this up, we're going to add eighteen eighteen plus. Uh, 3.4 for a grand total of 21.4. And the units are meters and they are squared. So we have an area, two dimensions, length and width. Um, so, yeah, that's how I would go about doing something like that. Hope that helps. Keep chipping away on Khan. Reach out if you have any questions, and we will see you on Monday with uh, this stuff.
So I'm gonna clear my drums. Expert. Sweet. And I'm gonna go to the next slide for algebra. Okay, uh, subtract rational expression. So add or subtract, again, going back to elementary school. To add and subtract fractions of any kind, we are going to need a common denominator. So put a little fraction bar over here. Put a little fraction bar over here and work on getting that common denominator. So in order to do that, I'm gonna multiply this fraction over here on the left side uh, by, well, I've got a 2m minus five, and then I don't know that. So I gotta multiply by 6m plus one. Do it to the bottom. Go to the top. All right, so that that takes care of that side for now, uh, and I need to multiply this side by 4m minus 7 because then when I do that, I will have common denominator. So let's change this up. And I'm or m minus seven and or m minus seven. And then comes a matter of just uh, distributing. This I'm actually going to make saying that the positive make that a negative eight. So we have negative eight here and here, and uh, minus three m will go here and here, and the denominator is the same: six m plus one, four m minus seven, two m minus five. And it says you can keep the denominator in its factored form. So let's deal with the red side first. Uh, minus 3m times 6m is minus 18. Square. And minus 3m times 1. And then over here, minus eight times minus four M is minus 32 M. And minus eight and minus seven is positive 56. Clean that up a little bit. So if we push this and this together, then negative 18 squared. Minus 35. Plus six. And what's nice about this is that um, you can leave the denominator in the fract in the factor forms. So a fraction bar going here, kind of straight, and then the bottom will just be. Uh, 
bottom will just be whatever order you want to write it in 6m plus 4, 4m times 7 and that would uh, be what that uh, looks like. Yeah. So hope that helps you. And that's what that problem and that's how that goes down so yeah use that or not <laughs> take what you like and leave the rest no worries either way i've got one more example of uh, these common multiple and then call it good so clear all drawings all right and go to the next slide, hopefully. All right, these common multiples. So we did this with uh, monomials, and now we're doing it with uh, trinomials. So you can give the answer in its factor form. Okay, that's nice. So I am going to identify a couple of different things. So we've got this pink expression here. So I'm going to factor that. So start with GCF 13. And K squared. Plus. 2k plus one. You can diamond this, you can use your head. It's a perfect square trinomial if you remember that pattern. So multiple different ways to factor this is really just and I'm gonna write the expansion uh, instead of it as a square. So there's that. All right. And then, so that's all the way broken down. So now we're going to look at this one. Changes here this lavender. All right, there is that lavender. Uh, and I'm going to pull out a 5k cubed as my GCF. Cubed, and I am left with k squared plus uh, 5k plus 4. And then factor this diamond four and five. A is one, so you can just use those. Uh, so A plus. Four. 
plus one. And then the five K cube also comes down. Okay, so we got it fully factored. So least common multiple is the lowest number all this will multiply into. So I'm gonna start multiplying uh, stuff to see uh, what the lowest number all this is that we can multiply it into. So I'm gonna multiply uh, 13. I'm going to multiply all of this really. Thirteen times k plus one. And another k plus one, because there's two of them there. I need to account for both of them. And then 5k cubed. So then the 5k cubed and the 13 will both multiply into 13 times 5k cubed. And then the k plus 4. I won't do the k plus one again because it's already accounted for here. k plus one will multiply into k plus one. And I have it twice because it shows up twice over here. So then I just multiply all that together, but I can leave it in factor form. So that left in factor form would be 13 times 5k cubed which is 65 K third. And then all the parentheses, K plus one. K plus one. And K plus four. All right, so there is a least common multiple problem. So I hope that helps you as you go on through all of this. Yeah. All right, so let us. Uh, Get out of here. Hopefully, I accept full screen. Maybe not. Stop share. Hey, there we go. So, um, yeah, thanks. Hope this helps. Use what you want, ignore what you want. If it doesn't help, then reach out if you have any questions. Um, and we'll check back in on Monday. So adios, be well, and stay healthy.